Hi, I'm Frank Pooley with Nice Group USA, High Security Gate Operators. We're here today to talk about the Titan 12L Gate Operator System. Uh, the Titan 12L Gate Operator System consists of a C-Box 936 and a 912L-1 linear actuator, which is our new Titan actuator. And uh, today we'll be putting this on a 16-foot square tubing ornamental gate. Uh, gate weighs about 350 pounds, and we'll fix it to get started. A reliable gate upper system begins with a good installation. And the beginning point of a good installation here is going to be placement of the pivot arm. Now the pivot arm, when you unpackage it, it's going to be an 18 inch long piece of square tubing with a half inch hole in it. Now, this pivot arm is going to need to be modified so that when we weld it onto our hinge post, the pivot point here is going to be 13 inches out and 6 inches over from the center of our hinges. In this case, I put a framing square here to show you how we're measuring directly out from the gate when it's closed and over to the pivot hole here. Also, the pivot arm needs to be one half inch below whatever horizontal member of the gate that we're going to be attaching to. Now, we want to attach to a, a structural member of the gate, uh, not to the pickets, so we're going to try to attach to a part of the framework here. In this case, we're attaching to the bottom rail of the gate, so this pivot arm is going to be a half inch below the center of that bottom rail of the gate. When we attach the pivot arm, it's important that this pivot arm be level and plumb. So if we take a carpenter square and lay it flat on the pivot arm when we attach it, if we get all three bubbles within the lines, we know that this pivot arm is level and plumb. Welding the pivot arm on is the best way to install it. All of the force to move this gate is going to be transmitted through this pivot arm. So it's very, very important that it be attached securely, rigidly, so that this operator can work properly. The next step in our installation is attaching the linear actuator to the gate. The Titan actuator is going to arrive in the retracted position, which for a pulled open installation is going to be the open position. So if we swing the gate to the full open position and attach this linear actuator to the gate in that fully open position, uh, that limit switch is going to be set for us and we're not really going to have to adjust it. We might have to fine tune it a little bit later, uh, but it's going to probably be set really close to where we want it. So in this situation here, we've opened the gate all the way up to where we want it. We've mounted our linear actuator and we've attached our gate attach bracket to the gate in that position. Now because our pivot arm is level and plumb and because we are a half inch below the center line of that structural member that we're attaching to with our pivot arm. When we mount this operator, it's going to be level. Uh, that's very important because we don't want this operator getting in a bind as it's opening and closing the gate. We should be able to remove the pin here in the open position quite easily. That tells us that, that actuator lines up with that gate bracket and it's not getting in a bind. Now, once we get to this point, we can raise our mechanical release and with the T25 Torx driver, we can remove the screws and remove this top cover to show us our limit assembly here. The limit assembly is set for a very short stroke of travel out of the box. And we could hook the unit up and run it back and forth and adjust this limit to close the gate all the way where we want it. But an easier way and a faster way is simply to disengage the mechanical release and then swing the gate to the fully closed position and this limit switch will self adjust for us as we swing this gate fully closed. So as we swing it closed, it's going to hit the closed limit, but we're going to continue manually pushing it, and it's going to self-adjust that limit switch. And when we get the gate to the fully closed position, we don't want to push the gate any further than we want it. Stop it right there. There's our fully closed position. And that's going to self-adjust that limit switch and we're going to be really close with our limit switch adjustment for that closed position. We might need to fine tune it a little bit later, but that's going to be really close. So then we're going to bring the gate back open to the halfway position. We're going to re-engage the mechanical release with the gate in the midway position. I like to go ahead and re-engage it here in the midway position and do my connections to my operator, to my board, so that if I make a mistake when I do my wiring, if it's going the wrong direction or I've, I've overlooked something, um, the gate is able to travel either direction without giving me any problems and so I'm always going to put my operator back in the midway position and so then whenever I hook it up to the board I can continue with my installation. The next step in our installation process is to connect the actuator to the board. Our motor connections are going to be at the bottom left area of the board. 
motor one and motor two. In a single gate application, we'll be using just motor one. In dual, of course, we'd be using both motor locations. For a Titan 12L actuator, we connect to here at the left on motor one. The first hole will be empty. The second hole will be our yellow wire. Third hole will be our blue and green. Fourth hole our orange. Fifth hole our white. Then our black on the left, our red motor wire on the right. And this is for a pull to open installation. Refer to your instruction manual exactly how to wire the unit depending on if it's a pulled open or pushed open installation. For pushed open, the orange and white wires and the red and black wires will be reversed. If this were a dual unit, our motor 2 would wire exactly like our motor 1 connections. Black on the left, red on the right for our motor. Then empty, yellow, blue and green, orange and white for a pull to open application. Next we're going to be connecting the battery to the system. Power for the operator comes from the 12 volt battery in the unit. In this case we're using a seal lead acid marine starting battery. I like seal lead acid marine starting batteries because they don't need any maintenance. They never get water added to them. Uh, they don't off gas and corrode the box. It's just a really good choice for the system. We recommend a 70 amp hour or large battery for our solar applications and a 35 amp hour or larger for our AC charged applications. In this case we're going to be doing a solar application. Our battery connection is at the lower right area of the board there. You'll see that we've connected the battery negative on the left, battery positive on the right, that's our power, and the large connector here from the battery. And then just to the right of it are our wires from our solar panel. We've connected them to our solar P inputs on the board, black on the left, red on the right. And we're using the internal charge regulation of the board to keep this battery charged. If this were an AC application, we'd be using a fully automatic battery charger and we connect that battery directly to the battery and plug the AC charger into an electrical outlet. The Titan 12L gate operator is a UL325 compliant machine and one of the things that is required on all UL machines is that there be at least one monitored safety device connected to protect against a pedestrian entrapment. In this case, we've chosen to put the photo eyes just on the outside of the gate, across the closed position of the gate. There you can see we put the cover on that one already. We've saw cut across this driveway using a circular saw with a masonry blade in it. Put a conduit across the driveway and sealed it back with some asphalt patch. Here we have this photo eye still open so we can make our wiring connections. And this is going to be our monitored safety device for this system. Keep in mind in a lot of swing gate applications, the opening position, if the gate opens against a fence or a wall as it opens, that is a major point of entrapment as well. And you put photo eyes there in addition to one maybe across the driveway. Up to six Blue bus photo eyes can be connected to this unit and all be monitored and there can be two additional 300 hertz output devices such as an EMX RB RET connected if we want to use a reflective photo eye. When we connect power to the board, we're going to get a chasing cursor, then the firmware version of the board displayed and then the board will search the blue bus input to look for the monitored safety input. This is a UL325 compliant gate operator. It does require at least one monitored safety device to be connected to the board in order for it to be functional. You'll see here that we've got an E1 flashing on the display indicating that we have not, the board has not found or does not see the monitored safety devices that it needs to be functional. In this case we're going to be using the blue bus through beam photo eyes. Uh, the model EPMB slash A photo eyes that are supplied with the unit. And these photo eyes are going to connect right here on the right hand side of the board to the blue bus connection. Now these are a through beam photo eye. Uh, very reliable and of course it's provided with the unit. But if you want a reflective monitored photo beam, that is a possibility as well. Uh, you could use a device such as the EMX IRB RET photo eyes and those can be connected to the board in a different manner and use instead of the through beam units. So here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in my monitored photo beams. We've already mounted them and wired them. It's very easy to wire hook up for these photo eyes and then I simply press the learn button and the board will relearn that blue bus input. It's doing now flashing BB and when it finds the photo eyes and determines that they're working properly it will give us two dashes on the display 
and we'll be ready to proceed. So there the board has found the photo eyes, it's determined that they're working properly, and we're ready to go from here. Now on the circuit board, after powering the board up, we should have LR blinking on the board. If we don't, we can press and hold reset until FD is displayed on the board. When FD is displayed, that means we've done a factory default. Now we can hold the open button and the gate will open, or we can hold the close button and the gate will close. We can run the gate full open and full close between the limits and we can do any necessary limit adjustments to the operator. So at this point, LR is still blinking on our board, indicating that the board needs to be learned. Again, we can press and hold the open or close buttons to open and close the gate and verify our limit switch adjustment. So in this case, we're going to press and hold the close button. The gate's now closing, and when the gate reaches a close limit, we'll get an indicator on the board right here, indicating that the gate has hit that closed limit. And as we open the gate, that indicator will go out, and when the gate reaches the fully open position, we'll get an indicator above the orange wire indicating that the gate operator has hit the open limit switch. Again, the operator needs to have the limits adjusted properly to do the learning process. There's our light above our orange wire indicating the open limit. Now again, these limits don't have to be perfect, but they do need to be close. The operator must be able to reach both the open and close positions to do the learning process. So we're going to move the gate back halfway now. The operator can actually begin the learning process from any position, but I like to do it from the midway position. LR is still blinking, so we're going to press and hold the learn button until LR becomes solid. It takes about four or five seconds before LR becomes solid. LR is now solid. We're going to press OK. When we press OK, the operator is going to begin the learning process. The first thing it's going to do is a short opening cycle in looking for how many motors and what type of motors are connected to the board. Now, of course, if this were a dual installation, we'd want to adjust our limit switches on our two motors individually and then have them both plugged into the board to begin the learning process so that the operator would learn that it's a dual system. In this case, this is just a single gate unit, and so we've got the one operator connected to the motor one side of the board. We're in the learn mode. LR is solid. The gate is in the midway position. And we're going to press OK and begin the learning process. So there I've pressed OK. It's going to do a short opening cycle looking for how many motors are connected to this board. Now it's doing a full closing cycle looking for that closed limit switch. So it's going to close the gate all the way. When it finds the limit switch, it's going to stop on the limit switch. The indicator on the board, of course, will come on and the gate operator is going to stop in the closed position. And you see there we've got that closed limit adjusted really nicely. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now the gate's going to open. It's doing this all on its own. It's running half speed. Now the operator is looking for the open limit adjustment, or the open limit switch rather. And when the gate gets fully open, it's going to stop on the limit switch. Again, the limit indicator light will come on on the board indicating that it's hit that limit switch. It's doing all of this at half speed. The reason that it learns at half speed is in case something isn't right, you can catch the gate and stop it before it crashes. There's our open limit right there. Gate's in the full open position where I want it. And now it's closing at full speed. And you can see as it closes, right before the end of the cycle, it's going to slow down right there and come in nicely to the fully closed position. Now I no longer have to hold my open and close buttons. I can simply press and release open. The operator is going to ramp up to full speed. Traveling open, very nice and smooth. When it gets almost fully open, it's going to slow down right there and finish the open limit right there. Press and close. Again, I no longer have to hold the buttons. I can just press close. The operator is now going to ramp up. Running full speed to the closed position. 
Now, if I do want to adjust my limit switches, I can go back in to my limit assembly and I can adjust my limit switches and fine tune them. I do not need to relearn the board if I only make minor limit adjustments. And right there's my fully closed position. I'm very happy with the closed position of the gate. If I do want to close it just a touch more, I can, but I'm quite happy with it. So with our operator installed and the course limit adjustments done, we can now come in and do any fine tuning of the limits necessary. This can be done before or after the learning process. It really doesn't matter. The main thing is that during the learning process, the limits are at least close and get the gate to open and close about where we need it, but they don't have to be perfect. So after it's adjusted and after it's learned in the course adjustments, then if we need to come in and do any fine adjustments, we're going to remove this small cover here exposing the two limit adjustment knobs. In here we have a white cam for the retracted position and a blue cam for the extended position of this actuator. By turning these fine tuning adjustment knobs we can adjust these cams and adjust how far the gate opens and closes precisely. After the limit adjustments have been made, replace the adjustment cover. Of course put your cover back on the unit by raising the mechanical release. Tighten down with the two T25 Torx head screws and lock the cover back into place. Okay, now we're ready to do a little basic board programming. After 20 seconds of inactivity, the board will go into a standby mode or a power saving mode. Pressing any button on the board wakes up the display and now we're ready to program. See here that the board gate is in the closed position, as indicated by CL on the display. So the first button at the top left area of the board is a force programming button. If I press force, FC will be displayed in the default value of 3 shown. To adjust this value, I can go down, making the gate more sensitive, or go up to make it push stronger. Basically, this is adjusting the inherent obstruction detection in the operator, where if the operator obstructs on a physical obstruction as it's running, it will raise the current of the motor and the board will detect that obstruction. So one is the most sensitive, five is the strongest setting on the force level. The next button is the slow down button. If I press slow down, SP for slow down speed, and again, default level is going to be three. I can adjust it down to give it the minimum amount of slow down, or up to five to give it the maximum amount of slow down. Basically these values are five percent from the limit switch, 10%, 15, 20, and 25% before the limit switch. Set it to the desired level and press OK to lock in that value. The earlier the unit slows down, the more it's going to slow down. So by adjusting the slowdown speed, we can affect how much slowdown we get. The next button is going to be the auto close button. When we press auto close, it says AC for auto close, and the default level is th zero. Adjusting this, will give us the amount of time before the gate closes automatically after it reaches the open position. Again, press auto close, AC, the level there or the amount of time, setting it to zero turns off the auto close feature. Okay, back to more board programming. Again, the board has gone into standby mode. Pressing any button wakes the board up. Under options, BB for blue bus. If we add or remove anything from the blue bus input on the board, we can relearn the blue bus. Just press OK and it will rescan the blue bus input and see if anything's changed to make sure our monitored safety devices are still connected properly and working properly. If it finds a problem there, you will have to relearn the blue bus input by pressing the learn button. Here it's found everything to be working on the blue bus input and it's ready to go. So again, options, blue bus, BP for biparting. In a dual gate application, we can dial in up to five seconds of delay between the two gates where it opens motor one first, then after the delay opens motor two, then on closing, closes motor two, after the delay closes motor one. Again, only used for dual gate applications. The next one is RA for run alarm. The run alarm, there's an output on the right side of the board, lower right area, where we can hook up a siren or strobe. And turning the run alarm, waited just a moment too long there and it exited out. Turning the run alarm on to option one, 
puts a four second delay on the operator where it sounds the alarm before moving the gate, but the alarm does not sound while the gate's running. Say to option number two, puts the alarm on for four seconds before moving the gate, as well as sounding the alarm the entire time the gate is running. The default selection for the run alarm is off. The next selection is RC for radio channels. If we're using the plug-in OXI receiver that's provided to no charge with this operator, we can program the NICE remotes to that receiver, which we'll do in a later step. And then by going into Options and going to RC and selecting OK, we can choose how those remote controls work. Under option number one, button number one will be open, stop, close, but button number two will be non-functional. Under option number two, Button one would be non-functional, button number two would be open, stop, close. So this would be nice if we have two gates installed in close proximity to one another, where we could have one gate set to option number one, where button number one activated that gate, and the other gate to button number two, option two, so that button number two worked it. This way we could run each gate independently with one remote control. Option number three, under radio channels, option number three gives us the ability to open, stop, close the gate with button number one, but lock the gate in the fully open position with button number two. It's a really neat feature where we can lock the gate open, but still no higher current consumption. The board will still go into standby, but we can lock the gate open if we're expecting company or uh, having a party or something. So now options. Blue bus, biparting, run alarm, radio channels. The next one is a standby mode. By default, the standby is turned on, which is recommended. This is where the board goes into a low power state after 20 seconds. If for some reason you desire to turn the standby mode off, you can. However, I do recommend leaving it on, especially for your solar applications where it conserves power. The next selection is SC for gate synchronization. Again, this is only for dual gate applications. This is where it would try to synchronize the two gates we turn this feature on, it would try to synchronize the two gates so that they reach the fully open and fully closed positions at the same time. Now when we use this feature, we always want our fastest motor to be connected to motor one. It's going to try to slow that motor one output down to match the runtime of motor number two. Again, the default for this is off. The next one is SL for solenoid lock. Again, on the lower right side of the board, just below the alarm output, there's an output for a solenoid lock. If we have a solenoid lock, we can turn that lock output on by selecting option number one here. And when we do this, not only does it turn the lock output on and activate the lock on the opening cycle of the gate, but it also puts a slight delay on the operator where it allows the lock to release before it moves the gate. It's about a one second delay on the gate. The default setting for this selection is off. The next two selections are P1 and P2. P1 is for input one, P2, input 2. This is how we can change two inputs on the board so that we can use those inputs for a 300 hertz pulse input to be monitored. So if we're not wanting to use the blue bus photo as it came with the unit, we could actually use input number 2, which is right here, or input number 1, which is right here, that center terminal, I'm sorry, that center terminal right there. We could change the functionality of these inputs. By default, these inputs are step-by-step -step inputs, but we can change them. So again, to change those inputs, we go Options, go down to P1, which would change the input at the, on the left side of the board, the lower left, or P2, which would change the input here at the top left. By default, both of those are defaulted to zero, which is open, stop, close. Changing it to a number one makes that input a pulse safety input, changing it to two makes it a pulse entrapment input. So if we select one or two for either of these inputs, the board does have to see a 300 hertz pulse on that input to be functional, and that can be used in place of or in conjunction with your blue bus photo eyes for monitoring, for monitored safety device. Again, the de default level for both P1 and P2 are both zero. P1, zero. P2, 0. That means that those inputs will be step by step and we can hook up a radio receiver or a keypad or some device like that that would be used to open, stop, and close the gate. And that is the programming of the 936 board.
Let's now talk about how to program a NICE transmitter into the NICE receiver. The easiest and fastest method for programming the NICE transmitters into the OXI receiver is to, on the right hand side of the receiver, there's a button here right above the light. Press and hold that button until the green light on the receiver comes on solid, right there. With the green light on solid, then press and hold either button of the transmitter, it does not matter which, until the green light goes out. When the green light goes out, release. The green light will flash three times on the receiver, indicating that this process was successful. The green light will then come back on solid, as it is now, and again, press and hold either button on the transmitter until that green light goes out. Release, three blinks will indicate that the process was successful. Continue doing that with all your transmitters until you're done. You can always come back and add more transmitters later if necessary, and then wait until the receiver light turns out, indicating that the programming process is complete. Once programming is complete, we can then test our transmitters. Now, earlier in programming, we went into options, and we went into RC, and again, we can select option number one. If button number one is going to be open, stop, close, button two, non-functional. Option two, if we want button one, non-functional, button two, open, stop, close. Or in this case, I'm going to say to option number three, where button number one is going to be open, stop, close, and button number two is going to lock the gate in the fully open position. So now, if I press button number one, You'll see that the gate begins opening. Pressing button number one again, the gate will stop. Pressing button number one again, the gate will close. If it's closing, I press button number one, the gate will stop. And this is the same for both transmitters. Pressing button number one again, the gate will open. With the gate in the full open position, if the timer close were turned on, it would time out and auto close after the amount of time set for the auto close value. So as gate's coming open, we see it gets to the full open position, and it says OP for open. The auto close is not turned on, but if we go in and press auto close, AC for auto close, and set, let's say, that value for five seconds, now the next time it gets an open command, which I'll do right there, you'll see that it starts counting down to close automatically. And after it gets the zero, it will then start closing the gate. Now if I press button number two on the transmitter, the gate is going to come full open, and once it gets to the full open position, instead of auto closing, it will simply say OP. So even pressing button number one has no effect because I've locked the gate open with button number two. Again, pressing close, pressing open has no effect because the gate has been locked open. So now I need to unlock the gate by pressing button number two, and this can be on any transmitter. When I press button number two, it unlocks and immediately closes the gate. And that's how easy it is to program the NICE transmitters into the OXI receiver and adjust their functionality as far as what they do. So let's talk about accessories for a moment. Let's say that we want to hook up an external radio receiver for this unit. Uh, we've decided we're not going to use the OXI receiver, or maybe we want to use um, multi-code or digicode transmitters in addition to the OXI receiver. Uh, we need a radio receiver that will work 12 volt, obviously. And like any accessory, a radio receiver is going to be a four-wire hookup. We're going to need one wire for power positive, one wire for our ground, and then our other two wires are going to be our relay common and normally open. So we're going to use one of our three terminal connectors. In this case, we're using the one here at the top left corner of the board. And we're going to connect these wires so that our red wire will be connected to the 12V terminal. The gray wire, which in this case is our normally open, will be connected to the input, the middle terminal. And then our ground and our common of our relay, which is the other gray wire, will be connected to the ground terminal. And then all we have to do is plug this radio receiver in here. Now we're powered up. We've got our relay connected. All we have to do is cut our transmitters to the receiver, mount it, and t connect an antenna coax over to the antenna connector on the side of the box and connect our antenna on the outside, and we're ready to go. So that's simple to connect a digicode, multicode receiver, or any other brand of receiver for that matter. It's always going to be a four-wire hookup. Basically, the same applies to any other accessory you're going to be hooking up, whether it be an exit sensor, a loop detector, a photo eye, a non-monitored photo eye, that is. Um, a hardwired keypad or whatever. In this case, we've got 
this um, MFM exit sensor here. It's connected to a 100 foot exit sensor buried down the driveway. Here's our wires from that sensor in the ground. Of course that sensor is always put in conduit to protect it physically from gophers or anything chewing into the wires. And then we need power and ground for this device. And then we need our normally open and common connections to the board for activation. So in this case we've got our red and green wires connected right over here on the left side of the board to 12V and ground. That's for power. And then we've got our common and normally open connections over here to exit and ground. You see we've also tapped wires going over to a hardwired keypad off of the exit sensor. We're picking up power off the exit sensor and combine our relay contacts over to a hardwired keypad. That's why those wires are all doubled up there. So it's that easy to connect any accessory to this system, whatever it might be. Okay, so we have the system in, everything's programmed. The last thing I'd like to talk about is finishing up your installation. Uh, a nice and tidy control box makes this system a whole lot easier to work on down the road should you have any problems. Having the wires laid out, having things color coded, having things just neat where you can figure out where things are and where things are going sure helps a lot if down the road you do need to troubleshoot the system for some reason. So you can see here we've run conduits inside the control box for our wires coming in from the outside, for our exit sensor and our, our hardwired keypad. They're on the left side of the control box. We've installed the control board for the uh, exit sensor. And the box is just nice and neat. Another thing we've done is on all our wires, we've made a nice drip loop for the actuator. We don't want that cord just pulled up tight when it comes out the actuator. We've put a nice drip loop there. Also, we've tightened that rear bolt keep that bolt from moving. Uh, that bolt actually should be snug, it should not be left loose. We've wire tied our wire, we've used cable clamps, bring all our wires up underneath the control box, bring them inside, put a little dab of silicone there at the lower right where they come inside. Uh, as you can see this isn't a brand new installation, it's been here for a little while, we're just kind of reviewing the installation today. Uh, but, but neatness counts. It really does help to have a nice, neat control box. Uh, not only does it just look professional, and your customer's going to be happy, uh, but it just makes it easier down the road should you need to troubleshoot or come in here and remove a battery and, and service a battery or, or anything. There's just not a, a nest of wires in here making a mess. All right, a little more on finishing up your installation. You see here we've got our gate installed, our upper installed, all the wires are nice and neat. We've installed our warning signs to make sure people are aware that this is an automatic gate upper and they should not be um, in the area of the gate as it's moving. Uh, we've tied all our wires up and everything. We've got our solar panel attached, nice clear south-southwest view of the sun. We've got our auxiliary antenna mounted right there on top of our solar panel, guide up nice and high to get full range out of the radio receiver. And so one of the last things I do is I show the customer how the operator works. I show them that if I press button number one, I can open the gate. If the gate's opening, if I press button number one again, I can stop the gate. If the gate's closing and something breaks the photo eyes, as it does now, the gate will immediately stop and reopen. It's got our photo eyes right here on the outside of the gate. Um, if the gate's opening and senses an obstruction, It will sense that obstruction and stop and back up. If it senses an obstruction two times in a row, it will then go into hard shutdown. We need to show them on the board how to press the reset button. If there's a hard shutdown occurrence, that the gate operator will not work again until they reset the hard shutdown. So that's, that's an inherent safety mechanism in the operator that's required by UL325, the hard shutdown. Remember, if it senses two obstructions in a row before fully opening and closing, it will then go into hard shutdown. It will need to be reset on the board or an external button could be could have connected to the reset input on the left side of the board. Show them how the remotes work. How if you hit button number one, we can open the gate, we can stop the gate, we can close it. Show them the timer to close. Once the gate's open, the amount of time that the gate's gonna wait before it starts closing. Again, on this unit, we've got an exit sensor so and the photo wise, so it's, so it's pretty safe. Uh, it'd be a good idea to have another safety sensor on the inside of the property if we're using the auto close, but at least we have the one just on the outside of the gates there. Remember that on button number two for our remotes, we set that. So if we press button number two, it's going to open the gate fully and lock the gate in the full open position. So here I've set button number two. 
show them that when they press button number two, the gate's gonna open all the way and lock in the open position. I've just done that, I've pressed button number two, the gate's coming fully open. I remember that when the gate's locked open, button number one has no function, okay? So in this case, the gate is fully open. If I press button number one, it will not close the gate. For some people, that tends to be a little bit confusing to them. They don't remember that they've locked the gate open. If the customer ever has an issue where the gate won't close, the gate won't work, it's open and we can't close it, tell them, hit button number two, and that'll immediately unlock that gate and it will close. So make sure you educate your customer on how this system is gonna work and that'll make them have a more pleasant experience with their new gate operator.